All right, so fortunately for you guys, we're already a little bit ahead of the other sections. Otherwise, we'd be really in trouble right now because I do have examples to cover today. Um, let's get to it. I think it's time to start. Oh, yeah, it's time and then some. <laughs> so don't worry, I'll go, I'll go over to make up for it, right? Do you go over what? Over time. You don't think there's a day we should go over time? I mean, there is a day, but today is not the day. Today is not the day? All right, let's get to it then. We, we have basically just the end problem. We've already worked the systems of, I already worked the parabola fit problem here, right? We had like the uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We plugged in the three points. We found the three equations to find the parabola that fits the points. Parabola that fits the points? We didn't do that? Oi, oi, oi. So, well, did I? Did I hit? All right, let, let me just write the problem out. And if I've already done it, well, you'll stop me. If I haven't, I'll do it, okay? So, um, it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're given that the points 2 minus 8, um, minus 4, minus 68, and minus 3 minus 38 are on the graph of the parabola, then you're supposed to find the A, B, C that make it so? I didn't do this one? Nope. All right, so let's do it. So basically you just plug these points in, and um, so we've got minus eight is equal to A times, min uh, a times two squared, plus B times two, plus C. We've got minus 68 equals A times minus four squared, plus b times minus 4 plus c, and minus 38 is equal to a times minus 3 squared, plus b times minus 3 plus c. So all I did was I plugged the points into the equation, right? Uh -huh. And then clean it up. What do we have? What are we, what are we up against here? We've got ourselves um, 4a <coughs> plus 2b plus c equals minus 8. 16a minus 4b plus c equals minus 68 and 9a minus 3b plus c equals minus 38. So this is three equations and three unknowns so we know how to solve it but we also know that it's going to take a little work right? So I'll call this equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Our goal is to eliminate a variable right? So it's fairly obvious we want to eliminate C, right? Because we, we can eliminate C from both by just subtracting one from two and, I mean two from one and three from two, right? So like one, equation one minus equation two is, so I've got four minus 16 is minus 12A, minus two minus a minus four is plus six B. The C's cancel and we get equals to minus 8 plus 68, which is 60. Um, likewise, if we take equation 2 and we subtract equation 3 from it, 16 minus 9 is 7a, minus 4 minus a minus 3 is minus b, the c's cancel, we get minus 68 plus 38, which is minus 30. So let me call these equations that we just found. So we've, we've eliminated the variable, right? So this is equation four and equation five. I think the way to go here is to, yeah, solve for B, exactly. So solve for B, we get B is equal to seven A plus 30, right? And then just plug this into um, four. And that gives us minus 12 A plus six times seven A plus 30 equals to 60, which is minus 12a plus 42a plus 180 equals to 60, which is 30a equals to minus 120, which tells me that a equals to what? Four. Minus 4, right. Notice the minus. Yeah. minus a is minus 4. So what's b then? So 
we go back to this one here, 7a plus 30. So that's 7 times minus 4 plus 30, also known as 2. Right? And then how do you find C? What's that? You plug in A and B into the first equations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which one do you want to use? It doesn't, I mean, you, you can't go wrong, right? Number one. Yeah, number one. Okay, so we've got 4 times minus 4 plus 2 times 2 plus C equals to minus 8. This is from 1, right? And so C is equal to minus 8 plus 16 minus 4 also known as 4, I think. So therefore, c equals to 4. And my solution is y equals to minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. There you go. I thought I worked that one in here. Oh, well. You guys must have distracted me with some kind of nonsense. It's all your fault. Well, anyway, there it is now, right? Make sense? Are you sure it's a minus 8, though? I'm sure it's a what? Are you sure it's a minus 8? Never mind. It is. Okay. Um, I can check my answer. Uh, minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. Yep, yep. Now, um, so here, here's a nasty question. <laughs> a nasty question I could ask on the final would be this, right? Oh dear. Example two. You know, given y equals ax squared plus bx plus c has points 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, find ABC, right? Actually, this is not, this is not, not at all and, and, and the formula, right? Let me just say, find the formula for the parabola, right? I guess I should make, to make it, inter like the answer to this one, zero. See what this gives you is, so zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, right? So you get A, well, you know, <laughs> what happens here when you plug in? Oh, wait a minute, this is impossible. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, my bad. I, I meant to, um, oh, good grief. So sad. Yeah, vertical line test. <laughs> Duh. Duh. There we go. How about this? So this would give you what? This would give you A plus B plus C equals to zero. This would give you um, 4A plus 2B plus C equals to zero. And this would give you 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 0. But here's the thing, guys. <laughs> the factor theorem says what? It says, it says f of x is what? a times what? x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3, right? Because you have 1, 2, and 3 are zeros. But what is this equal to? ax squared plus bx plus c, right? 
How can this be? How can we have that cubic equal to this quadratic? How is it possible to have these two equal? Because a cubic and a quadratic, they're not, not equal. There's only one way out of this. The way out is that big A is equal to zero, as is our A, B, and C. And it's easy to go back and check that that solution works, right? Zero, 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 zero plus zero plus zero, zero, zero plus zero plus zero, zero. So, solved. See, I didn't need to do the three equations, three unknowns, because I understand factoring. Hey, hey. A, a less weird version of this problem, while I'm chasing this rabbit for you guys, since you're here, is I could, here's a, here's a, here's a, like a less disconcerting version of that problem. You could have, let's say, one zero, minus one zero, and, um, oh, I don't know, zero comma three on the graph, right? See, we could adopt the, we could, we could solve it like we did example one, right? But what would be smarter is to use the factor theorem. Because the factor theorem says what? F of x is what? Something we don't know, right? This gives me x minus one. That gives me x plus one. And this means that f of zero is what? Three, right? So apparently a is equal to minus three, right? So what we got then is f of x is minus three times, well, this multiplies to x squared minus one, doesn't it? So you got minus three x squared plus three. So a is equal to minus three, b is equal to zero, c is equal to three. See, these, these, there's, there's sneaky things to do in these problems if you remember what we knew earlier in the course, right? But anyway, your homework doesn't do any of that. But I have been guilty of doing such things on previous final exams. Just saying, yeah. Now, if we adopted the approach of example one, how would we solve this? We'd just do what? Just plug in the points, right? Face the equations. The equations wouldn't be hard. This one, the equations would be really nice. See, if I plug in, let me just look at them for a second here. So what are the equations? The equations are a plus b plus c equal to zero. The next one is a minus b plus c equals to zero, right? And then the third one is 9a plus 3b plus c equals to zero, right? So this is like the first example I did last class for three equations to your unknowns, which was like super, super nice because if you look at this, we can subtract those equations and immediately deduce from looking at one and two and three, right? If we look at equation one minus equation two here, we get 2b equal to zero because the a's cancel and the c's cancel. So we immediately get b equals to zero. And once you know b is equal to zero, well, Let's see what else can you do. You can sort of take two, two minus three, right? Two minus three gives you minus eight A. The B's are zero, right? The C's cancel. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Oh, the last one wasn't zero, was it? What was it? I'm a dummy. Oh, good grief. Come on, what's that third equation? It's totally bogus. Zero three means what? Plug in X equal to zero, right? Yeah, you guys got to call nonsense on that, right? That, that's just nonsense. What should I have there? So 
Sorry, I'm a little bit tired, <laughs> so you gotta watch me. Yeah, plug in x equal to zero, we get zero, we get zero, so we get c equal to three. Oh, so c is three, apparently. Yeah, this one's even nicer than the first one we worked, right? This is like the nicest three equations and three unknowns we've so far seen, pretty much. So, hey, c is three, b is zero, so what's a? I don't need to subtract equations to find a, I can just... So plug it whichever one you want, right? This a plus b plus c is what? It's a plus zero plus three equals to zero. So a is equal to, like you said, minus three. Which is of course what I found using factor theorem. So you can't really go wrong. This is actually a very friendly problem, whether or not you know the trick, right? It's friendly if you try to solve it in the sense we solved example one. It's even more friendly if you remember your, you know, factor theorem. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's that. Let's, let's, let's go on to the problems I was supposed to solve today before I ran out of time, yeah? Uh, yes, don't tell the others about these final exam problems. Um, <clears throat> If I was better at editing, I should like blur the videos, you know, <laughs> just leave the audio. <laughs> that would be maddening, wouldn't it? Okay, so example four. We've got x plus y equals to 13 and x squared plus y squared equals to 85. And you're given the above as two solutions one of which is six comma blank. So this is number 27 in your homework, give or take. All right, so it's very simple. I mean, it's very silly, I would say. Which is five, six, <laughs> right, right, it, it's just, it's so, it's, it's so contrived, this problem, but it's, it's a nice starting point, so let's do it. It's a good place to start the conversation about these problems. So, right, just put x equal to 6, so we've got what? We've got 6 plus y equals to 13, or what's the other one? That would be y equals 7. Well, yeah, y equals 7 from that, but what's the other one, just for a second here? Th 36, right, plus y squared, 85. So this gives me y squared equals to 49, which tells me that y is plus or minus 7. But you're right, what's in blue right above immediately tells me y is equal to 7. Now we're looking for a simultaneous solution of both equations, right? So you have to solve both. So I would say that the minus 7 down here is extraneous because even though it solves the second equation, it doesn't solve the first. So the only, the, the fill in the blank, 7. Now, I encouraged the other classes to use Wolfram Alpha to help with these last few problems, like numbers 27 through 30. Wolfram Alpha is a great help. It'll help you visualize what's going on and you'll have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, before I get that out though, let's work another problem. What would happen if instead of having 13 there, I had 15? Or let me work a related problem a little bit. Well, kind of, let me make it easier. Uh, example five. Hello. So, example five, we could have something like um, x plus y equals to, let's say, 20, and um, x squared plus y squared equals to, say, 40. Let's see if we can solve that. What do you, what do you guys think? What, now I'm not, we, this, just, no training wheel on the problem like the last one, right? This is just... Are we not giving them unknowns? You'd solve it. Find the solutions if there are any. Can we do it? Where, where they go on break. Like, before... Why did you give before me? 
Do you square root it? Square root it. Now, I think what we want to do, we want to do here is substitute, right? So, what I would do is I take the first equation and I solve it for y is 20 minus x, right? Yeah. Then I can take that and plug that up in here. And that gives me x squared plus 20 minus x quantity squared equals to 40. Now multiply that out. We've got x squared plus 400 minus 40x plus x squared equals to 40 which gives me 2x squared minus 40x plus 360 equals to 0. Well, this is a quadratic equation, so we can solve it, right? We'll divide by 2 to make things nicer, right? x squared. Now I can complete the square. which gives me x minus 10 squared equals to, you know, minus 80. So x is equal to 10 Wait, why is it plus or minus i times, oh, yeah. I, plus or minus 10, 10 plus or minus i times the square root of 80, which means there are no real solutions. And we're interested in real solutions. Now, your, your homework has instructions that say something about, like, consider complex exponents or something. And I'm just like, I don't know what they're talking about. Complex exponents in this class is just nuts. Um, so just disregard that sentence in your homework problems. I don't know why it's there, um, unless they mean something different than complex numbers. Um, what is complex exponents? That's something we'll talk about in the complex analysis course when you take it. Oh, fine. <laughs> Driven me to it. E to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if you have something like x to the 3 plus i, that's understood to be x cubed e to the i natural log of x, which then is understood to be x cubed cosine of the log of x plus i times the sine of log of x. So that's what a complex exponent looks like, oh, wow. assuming x is positive. But yeah, this stuff comes up in the differential equations course. Actually, you don't need the complex analysis course necessarily to see that. But um, anyway, the point is there's no solution here, right? In contrast, there was at least one solution there. It says there's two, right? Let me um, get the Wolfram Alpha out here for a second, and let's let's see what's going on. Let's let's take a look at it, okay? So. So what was the equation? What was it? The first one was x plus 5, right? I know x plus y equals to 13, wasn't it? And uh, all right, so I put that in, right? Oh, you got it? down here. I got to scroll down. So here what it is. Here's what it looks like. Um, as you can see, what's going on is we have, you know, a circle. Of course, x squared plus y squared equals 85 is a circle of radius squared of 85, right? And then x plus y equals to um, 13 is really y equals to 13 minus x, which is a line with slope negative 1 and a y-intercept of 13, which you can kind of see if you look at it. Right? Here's, this is the y-axis, yeah? So 13 is about right there. And so what I did was I made the circle a little bit smaller. In this example over here, right, I made the circle square to 40, the radius square to 40, and I increased the y-intercept. So like the other example we just worked and solved by algebra, 
I put the uh, y-intercept at 20, didn't I? And I put the radius, instead of 8 squared of 85, the square root of 40. And so that's geometrically a little bit different. That one, as you can see, there's no point of intersection between the line and the circle, right? So that's why we found no real solutions. So if we understand graphically what we're doing, then we can anticipate solutions here, yeah? Let's look at another one. So the next problem in the homework is, let's see, what example am I on? Five, okay, so six, example six. So example six is this one. It is 4x squared plus 5y squared equals to 41 and 5x squared minus 2y squared equals to 43. All right, so we're supposed to solve this. Let me show you what the solution is before we find it. Here it is. This is the solution. See, geometrically, it's a little bit outside our scope because this is an ellipse and that's a hyperbola. I didn't teach you guys how to graph those, right? You should, like, complain. I cheated you out of that material, right? I think Dr. Putney's covering hyperbolas in his section. Hey, maybe there's still time after break, right? You fixed it. I'm going to fix it again, though. Thank you, though. Yeah, I'm writing more. It's all good. You're fine. So um, anyway, that's what we're, we know what we're looking. We know, we expect four answers, okay? But let's find them. So how do you, how do, you do it? Well, so we, we can use the ideas that we, um, have, you know, gone over in the two equations to unknowns, those techniques and strategies still have application here, right? Basically, think of x squared and y squared as variables. You want to get rid of one of them, right? I'm going to try to make the y squareds go away. And to do that, I'm going to take equation 1 and multiply by 2. Yep. So 8x squared plus 10y squared equals to 82. And then multiply that one by 5, yeah. So 5 times equation 2 gives me 25x squared minus 10y squared equals to 215. And then subtract those. Oh, excuse me, add those, right? Because plus minus, so add. And when I add those, I get myself... 33x squared equals to 297, right? And so x squared is 297 over 33. But think about this, 33 times 10 is 330. 330 minus 33 is 297, therefore this is 9. Or you could use your calculator. Anyway, so that tells me then that x squared is equal to 9, which tells me that x is equal to plus or minus 3. Now, how do I find y? Whatever you want, right? Pick either equation 1 or 2, plug it back in, right? So we've got, what, 4x squared plus 5y squared equals to 41. But notice, we don't, don't plug this in. Be smarter about it. Plug the 9 in, exactly. Plug x squared is 9, so this is 9. 36, yeah. Plus 5y squared equals to 41. So 5y squared is equal to 41 minus 36, which is 5. So y squared is 1. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're done with this thing. Let me put it away. Um, so y is equal to plus or minus 1. So how many, wh wh what's the solution set then? But we need to list them explicitly, so here's how we do it. 3, 1, 3, minus 1, and then what, what are the other two? Mm-hmm.
There you go. There are four solutions. Those are the four ones we saw on the projector before I put it away, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So, now this one, I can only ask you to do this one algebraically because geometrically that's not nice because you didn't learn hyperbolas and ellipses in here, did you? Uh, can I teach her purples and ellipses in here? No, because it's not on the schedule, and I don't have time. But um, example seven. <laughs> come, back, come back next week. It's, it's kind of cold, but um, but I, I like it. So this this one we can do geometrically. The next one. So to answer your question, I need about an hour to do that justice. One hour. Yes. Okay. I mean, I can just I can tell you the formulas. Like, just, you know, just spit them back at you. It's like an ellipse is something like this. X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared equals to 1. That's an ellipse. And hyperbola is something like X squared over A squared minus Y squared over B squared equals to plus or minus 1. Depending on whether you get plus or minus, you get vertically opening or horizontally opening hyperbolae. And um, when a and, e, a and B are equal, it's a circle of radius A. Otherwise, it's, you know, this is the collection of all points that the sum of the distances between two focal points is held fixed. This is the collection of all points such that the difference of the distances between two given focal points is held fixed. So they're both defined in terms of like collections of points that are relative, the, um, related to a couple focal points. And then you can define the parabola as being the collection of points, which is equal distance from like the directrix and a focal point. And a line is the set of points which are equal distance from a pair of focal points. So all these basic functions you can define in terms of distance. But that's really a top, that's, that's the hour. It takes me an hour to really do that. At least an hour. So which class covers the This one? I mean, it comes back, it, it, it comes back up in calculus too, but to be honest, I think it's just missed these days. So a lot of times, yes, it should be done. It's assumed that it's known by a lot of older instructors, but not all high schools are doing all of it, I think. But it should be covered in high school, absolutely. I should have covered it in this course, right? But I've tried to make this course somewhat gentle relative to the, I mean, there is another 40% of material which could be included in this course, which I have not, because I'm trying to be gentle, believe it or not. What is the other 40% covered aside from this? Ellipses, hyperbolas, harder inequalities, uh, the binomial theorem, the um, linear programming, um, matrices, multiplication, addition of matrices, row operations. Um, let's see here. Some other things I forget, but. So which one the next after this one? No, if you want to see the matrices, you got to go take the linear algebra. Oh, okay, I'm going to run out of time. You guys, you guys always do this to me. So <laughs> 3x squared, I, I got two more problems to get through. We, got, we, we're, we are going to get through them, or I'm going to stay over time. You don't want me to do that, do you? I, that was already covered at the start of class. We do not want to go over time. So how about this one? This one, you can do the geometry for because this is within your scope. See, because the coefficients of x squared and y squared, they both match, they're positive. These are circles, right? Yeah. Circles. And I can clean it up a little bit more. This is x squared plus y squared equals to 13. And here you've got x squared plus y squared equals to seven, 78 over 9, which is nothing particularly pretty. All right? So what's the solution? The question again is to solve the problem, solve the system. Where did I put my? Ah. Solve x. Hmm? Oh no, you're thinking too hard. Okay. We got two equations. They both meet at x squared plus y squared, right? Oh. So, so you've got, you got 13 equals to x squared plus y squared, right? But it's also equal to 78 over 9. 
Ooh. So therefore, 13 is equal to 78 over 9. But this is nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. This is magaga. It's a, it's a nonsense term. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to start using that. I like that. Um, anyway, so, magaga. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, this, of course, this cannot be, right? So we made straightforward logical steps of the given equations. We came to an absurd absurdity. That means that there's no solution, right? So therefore, no solution. Solution set is empty. Oh, Magaga is not empty. Magaga is full. There's much, much to Magaga, but it is nonsense <laughs> from top to bottom. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so, um, listen, can you explain to me why this happened geometrically? What are these two curves? They're circles, right? And what do they look like? What's the square root of 13? Yeah, it's, you're, you're, it's three points. So this is approximately 3.61 squared. And the square root of 78 over 9 Two point, uh, t about 2.94 point, 2 squared. So the radius of the of circle, let me, do, let me do some color coding here, all right? So like this one has like this, right? Radius 3.6. And the other one, circle two, has radius 2.94. They're concentric circle. There's no point of intersection. Therefore, there's no solution to the system. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think my, uh, my circles are to scale. You guys don't know about the Magaga, huh? Okay, that's good. Gives me hope. Magaga. <laughs> that's not how Magaga works. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> example eight. So here, oh, this is an important example. This is number 30. This is, this is a very important. Do you know the significance of this example? So again, we're supposed to solve the system, find all the solutions, yeah? You're like, absolute value, what? Oh man, not absolute value. I had, a, I, had a, I had unpleasant experience with absolute value earlier in this course, right? Some of you? Yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's, it's harmless. It's gonna be okay. Square? <laughs> square it? We don't, have a, we, don't have a, we don't have a square to spare, what? Oh, so you, you think we should graph it? Sure, why not? Is that not a circle? That is a circle. One, that is one. the most famous circle. Oh, that's a sad circle. Oh, well, I tried. So it's... That's the Magaga circle. That is... Uh, hmm. Not a circle. I'm not sure. And then the other one is what? If I, if I look at that, to graph that, what, what's that? Y equals... Um, y equals absolute value of x minus 1, right? Yeah, that's the V. So we take the V and we shift it one unit down, right? So... Like that, right? So we expect that there... There are three answers, right? 
So how do we find those algebraically? So like one of the answers is already obvious from the graph, right? Zero minus one. And you can check that, right? Plug it back into both equations, see it works. Zero squared plus minus one squared is one, yay. The absolute value of zero minus a minus one is one. So this is a solution to the system. How do we find the other two? Well, we want to do substitution, right? It's already right here. So you take this, yeah? Plug it up in here. So we've got x squared plus the absolute value of x minus one, quantity squared equals to one. And we just have to multiply that out and face the music, so to speak, here. So that's x squared plus the absolute value of x squared minus two times the absolute value of x plus one equals to one. So did you know that the absolute value of x squared is, is x squared? So let me put that into an equation here. Absolute value of x is the square root of x squared, right? That's the formula for the absolute value function algebraically. And so if you square this, you, you just get x squared. Or another way to look at it is since the absolute value of x is plus or minus x when you square it, you get x squared, right? Because either you get plus plus, which is plus, or minus minus, which is plus. Anyway, so what we got here, these two combine to give me 2x squared minus 2 times absolute value of x equals to 0. Which then gives me that x squared equals the absolute value of x. How do you solve, a, how do you solve an equation like that? I'm sorry. It seems we're going to go a minute over. I know. It's all, whose fault is it? My Gaga. It's My Gaga's fault. You can blame almost anything on Magaga. It's true. Primaries. Okay, so um, that's where the lines will be drawn 14 months from now. We'll all come to terms with Magaga. Okay, so anyway, um, so here you, you, you can get rid of the square root, right? Because this is really square root of x squared, right? So how do you get rid of square root? Square both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So this gives me x squared squared equals the square root of x squared squared, which is x squared. So what we have is x to the fourth equals to x squared, which we could repackage as x to the fourth minus x squared equals to zero, which we could rewrite as x squared times x squared minus one equals to x times x plus one times x minus one equals to zero which tells me that x is equal to zero minus one or one. And then since y is equal to the absolute value of x minus one, we get solutions zero minus one minus one zero and one zero. Now, you guys don't have to do the algebra like the way I did. There's another way to think about this. Let's talk about it and then we'll go on break, okay? So x squared equals the absolute value of x. Another way you could solve that is this. You could say, okay, well that's plus or minus x, right? So either x is equal to zero, right? Either x is equal to zero, that works, or x is not equal to zero, so we can divide by x. Right? And then we get x squared over x is equal to plus or minus x over x, right? x squared over x is x. x over x is one, we get plus or minus one. So Either you can work like this and find your three answers, or you can break it up into logical cases, divide. But when you divide by x, you have to be careful. Make sure you set aside logically 
x equal to zero is a solution, right? If you lose track of that, then you lost one of your solutions. And what does this all mean? The, the take home message from this is that my graph over there is garbage, right? But I did that on purpose because in the last class, I made a more careful graph and we just saw the answers without all this algebra. See, because you could do that, right? What's the graph actually look like? <laughs> I mean, it's this. <laughs> and these points are pretty obvious that you check them, you know? One zero, minus one zero. That, the, what's in red, that's what the, the absolute value actually looks like. And so if we, were making a care, if we were making a careful graph, we'd solve the problem graphically, actually. So why didn't you do that? Because what if we don't have this problem? What if we're up against x squared plus y squared equals to one, and two times the absolute value of x minus 3y is equal to 0. What if you want to solve that problem? See then, uh, if your only approach is graphical, you're going to get stuck. But this we could still solve with the same method that we just did up there. We could solve this for y, plug it in there, you'd have an equation just in x, you can sort through it. Same, met same algebraic method works, but the answers are uglier. The graphical popping out at you is only going to happen if we have the nicest of equations. And you can graph, which is not most people in here. So, um, I mean, that's just true. At least, you know, time pressure of a test. Graphing is hard, right? Like, I think left on your lonesome, if you're in a if you're desert island, a desert island? A deserted island. And like, if you could graph for food, then not everyone would be excellent graphers, right? But, Short of some sort of incentive, life or death, most people are not going to get better at graphing. Anyway, have a good break.